Good day folks, I'd like to talk more today about the energy systems we're basically ignoring today because of the famous redacted uh, Maxwell equations. They're simplified now and they took away, you know, there used to be at least 20 variables in the original Maxwell equations and um, without getting too much details into that I actually have previous videos if that interests you but some of those 20 variables um, for example talks about magnetics for example so let's say that just like in electronics you would have something called a magnetic potential you know so uh, there would be the equivalent of you know voltage where you know one plate has less voltage than another and it's that gyro flow from one point to another that we see today as electrical current however in the original Maxwell this is just one of them that's very interesting but there's a whole loads of them that can do really interesting stuff but the magnetics is what strikes me the most which is something I think we ignore and what I was saying is it's like having a um so let's say we were to actually incorporate this this according to these um, equations we would be able to have those magnetic potentials just like voltage instead of electronics it would be I guess um, mag magtronics you know so um, what would happen is we would have to figure out a way to get one magnetic potential to see another and have a magnetic flow from one lesser you know and then we'd have to figure out the equivalence of you know the semiconductors like a magnetic resistor that would resist that magnetic flow uh, the equivalent of a magnetic capacitor that could store these magnetic uh, forces so this is just and I'm not making this up this is all in the original Maxwell equations it was um, heavy side unfortunately that um, arguably made a butcherized simplified version of this leaving most of all of this stuff the original Maxwell equations so um, Tom Beardham talks a lot about this and the way he refers to the static charge and the uh, vacuum and how you know basically every generator battery whatever you want to call it is a source of infinite vacuum energy thanks to the forever furnishing um, magnetic dipole in his theories which of course the magnetic dipole believe it or not is another one of the Maxwell theories that oops we'll take that one out of there so taking that into consideration I guess the way Tom Bearden explains it is a pretty good way where you can look at a static field the name static is very deceptive because you know like he would say it's like looking at a waterfall from far away it's a I think the word he uses is a steady state dynamic system so as you see the waterfall from far away it's it appears to be static it's that same waterfall you see though it's beautiful there's water flowing down and it never seems to really move it's just that one line that one flow of water but as you get closer and closer you notice that oh it's actually individual particles that are in this very ferocious very active very energetic system as you get close you can feel the wind this thing is generated there's a splash you know not one water droplet is at the same place one comes back and replaces it so that's essentially Tom Bearden's way of explaining you know how the vacuum is as vast you know the Dirac Sea and this is how you know it pops in and out and one always kicks the other one out and you've got what he considers the steady state dynamic system in the static field essentially so um, a lot of people overlook that and um, I think it would be a major step forward in our understanding of electronics and possibly even new energy systems we can interact with so I want to give you an example here that you probably all know and before you jump to the conclusion please don't roast me on this I don't want to uh, argue the debate that I put my hand there and that's what made it move so I have an energy input so therefore it's not over unity I'm not talking about over unity this time what I'm talking about is using new energy systems and interacting with those 
And obviously, if you understand the uh, vacuum energy, you know this is a much denser source of energy if we could actually tap into it and use it. So no, it's not free in the sense it doesn't come from nowhere, it's just we can find ways to interact with these new and unknown energy systems. So with that said, I'm going to do a simple demonstration that could possibly prove exactly what Tom Bearden was saying here. So you probably know this, here's a compass here. And you know how a compass right, will react to, it's the magnetic field of the earth that drives the, the magnetic north and exerts that force through a magnetic field. So even though it looks like this meter is moving on its own, there's actually an external force driving it, right? And that's totally okay. That's how the compass works. It's the magnetic field of the earth, right? But something else, we all know if we put another field, even a static field near it, anything stronger than the Earth's field that it's receiving just passively will interfere with that and the meter will either swing the opposite way or towards depending on what the polarity and what charge. Obviously more of the charge and the more ferocious the meter is going to react, but it could be as little as a few volts and it could be a static charge, not even an AC. I'm not talking about AC, I'm not talking about pulse. I'm talking about a static charge. So for example, here's your, I'm going to show you right now, your one point, this is a brand new battery I took, here's the positive, here's the negative. Now I'm holding the meter and I'm shaking so it's going to be hard, so I'm going to place this on the table here and I'm going to move the camera towards the meter so you can see it here. So here's the meter, right? And here's my battery. So as you see, if I flip the battery with the plus side on the meter, you'll see the meter will react to that. I can make it swing back and forth. See? I'm doing this action with my meter. I ah, sorry, the battery. So it's reacting to the static field of the battery and it's moving the meter. If I leave the battery like this, the meter is going to move once and then stabilize. And then when I take it away, poof, it goes back in the original direction. Now if I do it like with the opposite, see, all of a sudden it's the same idea but reverse. So I flip the battery, all of a sudden now the meter works. It's going the other way. It's very hard to see, I'm sorry, but you could uh, uh, replicate this at home easily. But my point is, what we observe here is, folks, is actual force that was done as little as it may be, folks. There was something that moved the meter and there was a force that was exhibited on the meter. The meter moved, not only did it move from the initial change of static field, but it stayed there, it aligns with the new field. So what I'm getting at is not only was there a force to move it, but there's also a force, and if it's static, you know, how can it be keeping the meter in line, right? Because you still have other forces at work here. We have something called gravity that still works against this meter physically. We have the external force, the magnetic field still coming here, but we're overriding it with this. It still requires a force to counteract the natural force that's on this meter that wants to flip it back the other way. So not only do you have the force that triggers it, but you have the back underlying system that not only moves the meter but keeps the meter in line until you remove the static field. Now many will argue and say, well, there's nothing there. You, the battery is normal. It's a static field and there you only have that initial move once you put the meter in there. Once you put the, once you don't move it no more, it will stay there unless the magnetic field obviously alternates. But my point is, it's that moment that I took and I put it there, the meter swang. That didn't take any load off the battery. You see what I mean? We didn't use any, any current from the battery. Okay, yes, I understand. We have to initially charge the battery up to produce the separation of electrons between the positive and negative, causing this static field. I get that. But what I'm saying is by putting, I could put one meter here or a hundred compasses and they all flicker. And it's not going to take one nanowatt away from this battery. Yet we have observable physical work. The meter spins and not only spins, but will stay in place. So if the meter stays in place, there is still, you know, there's still a force at play. You know what I'm saying? Because you still have the Earth's forces whatnot. So you have that resistance not only being counteract, but it's keeping it locked there. So there's my, what I'm trying to say where the dipole 
is continuously, you know, it's another system, it's true, the vacuum, replenishing over and over and over this energy source, or else, you know, how would the battery not drain, and I can repeat this all day with 30 different compasses over and over again, you know, and the only energy, of course, I'm using is my crazy swinging hand here, but it's, again, I'm not talking about over unity here, oh, my hand, this is such a little work that it, it costs me more energy to put the meter under the battery. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is we're tapping into an actual static energy source we're actually getting noticeable work done and it's not costing us any of our electrical load in the traditional sense that's what I'm getting that and that's more of the manipulation we should be exploiting we should be researching we should be building more electrical circuits and devices around this concept I get it the meter it's very minuscule but it's just to prove the concept that physical work here was done, it was maintained, it didn't take any power from the battery in a traditional sense, even though the battery did provide the trigger for it, the separation of electrons which created that charge and that static field which then in return. But what I'm saying is, and as many times as I go like this, this is not an AC system, it's not going to magically drain my battery, yet I still have observable work. You want to take this concept even more, make a big play, put like a hundred of these compasses on it and feed like, you know, a thousand volts of static on the plate. I'm telling you, all your meters are going to swing for that moment. It didn't cost you any electrical work to do that because you had to build the magnetic field anyways as part of the trigger. So what I'm saying is electronics and magnetics, they work hand in hand, they work together, they couple each other, they complement each other. And all of this, folks, is in Maxwell's original equations. If you're more interested in this, I could list them. There's like 20 of them. And like Tom Bearden says, the things you can engineer if you take this into consideration and right before our eyes, folks, you know, how can you deny this? And, you know... I would like to hear more from you and um, let me know what you think and you know just something to make you say hmm have a good day.